and welcome to Front Porch Conversations here at Advent Christian Village. We are here at the Harmony Center this morning because there's a little chill in the air, so we're not on a porch today. But we have with us our guest today, Kathy Kemp. Kathy, thank you so much for coming and enjoying us this morning. Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate that. Well, Kathy, I understand you um, live in Carter House. Yes. Uh-huh. And when did you move there? Um, the 1st of September last year. So I've been here a little over a year. And as you told me when we were having another conversation, this was not a new place to you. Tell us about how you knew about the village. Well, I grew up in uh, Santa Clara, California, and we had an Advent Christian church there. And so from just a little one, uh, you know, I knew about um, the denomination and all, and that's when I was saved when I was in uh, junior high. And uh, then I ended up going to Berkshire Christian College. In Massachusetts and so I've always heard about back at that time it was the Advent Christian home mm -hmm. and um, it has grown considerably and uh, we always used to say well we'll probably end up at the home <laughs> and um, and I did started at the AC Church in Santa Clara and then up at Berkshire and praying for a lot of the missionaries and now I've met a lot of the missionaries face to face that I prayed for when I was little. Isn't that so, amazing it is. that it's, it's come wonderful. full circle to be able to have yes. that experience? Yes. And I think you have a lot of fellow alumni who live here as well from Berkshire. That's right. Several in our um, span of the four years are either pastors or missionaries and all. And uh, so we have quite a, uh, a group down here. We try to get together for birthdays and uh, you know, it's nice. you're busy here if you choose to be, and sometimes it's hard to coordinate, but um, a lot of good fellowship. And it was good for me to be able to come and know people versus coming to a whole new place and not knowing anybody. And I believe you were a college roommate with someone here. Yes, Phyllis Rand and I, she's from Northern Maine, Ashland. Mm -hmm. And of course I was from California. And um, my first roommate was uh, somebody else, uh, Mary Bull, and she was from Presque Isle. And, um, and then Phyllis and I became good friends, and so we're college roommates. And then the Lord called both of us and another friend down um, to Pensacola uh, to teach. And so, and so I, we've known each other for a whole bunch of years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Tell us a little bit about your early childhood. Well, I was the youngest of uh, three children. I have an older sister um, who lives in Maine, and her husband uh, was a pastor for a number of years, and uh, they live in Biddeford, uh, just south of Portland, Maine. And then my brother, who's about two and a half years older than I am, still lives in California. He's holding down the fort there. <laughs> and then there's me. And um, I used to joke about my brother took care of the Pacific Coast, and my sister took care of the Atlantic, get my uh, geography straight. <laughs> yeah. And then when I was in Pensacola, I said, well, I take care of the Gulf of Mexico. So we had everything covered. And they still are living in those places. So. When um, you finished college, that's when you came to Pensacola? Yes. Tell us yes. about what you thought. Was that your first trip to the South? Yes. Had done, I'm a native Californian. Now, it's hard to claim it <laughs> today. It's a little different than when I was growing up. Um, and uh, I student taught in New England, in Lenox, Massachusetts, and there, and I loved it. It's the first time in my years that actually I had four seasons. Um, and so I loved every season, and I really thought I want um, to teach up there. Well, the Lord had uh, Dr. Horton, who is the uh, founder and president of Pensacola Christian School, and he came up to interview for for teachers. And um, uh, our instructors we had at that time were uh, Dr. G Eugene Merrill and his wife. And um, Jean was grew up in the AC denomination too, and they were at the college. And uh, so she invited Dr. Horton up. And so we interviewed, and uh, he gave us contracts, and all. And I thought, oh, Lord, I don't think Florida is for me. And so I just prayed really hard. 
and we only had a short amount of time to uh, make a decision. And so I had kind of put a plea sign and said, Lord, if you want me to stay in New England, I need something right now. <laughs> well, I didn't get it. So I signed. I thought, okay, Lord, you want me in Florida? That's fine. And a few days after I'd signed, I got an offer from a school in the, up in New England. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, nope, too late. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was an adventure coming south. Uh, um, rented a car and found out at that time I didn't realize when I went to actually get it they said you're, too, you're not old enough and we thought what are we going to do but fortunately uh, one of the uh, parents was there so they signed for mm -hmm. us and so we trekked on down to Pensacola and the weekend we came was when Hurricane Camille hit the Gulf Coast. One of the worst hurricanes at, yes. by that time. And yes, and I thought, this is Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Give me California, we only have earthquakes. <laughs> but, um, so then I uh, stayed there for a good many years and loved the ministry, you know. And you taught, what did you teach? Well, I started in second grade. I wanted to make sure they didn't know more than me. So, <laughs> And then I uh, went up several times, different grades. After 22 years, beginning of the last few years, I taught in high school. I was a government economics teacher. I was also the cheerleading sponsor, which was really a hoot. Um, and then um, in the college as well, I did uh -huh. method courses in the college and also had student teachers and loved the ministry. It's fantastic. And then you went on to a number of other places in ministry. Um, yeah, the Lord called me up to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And, uh, and it kind of uh, made me realize, because I taught a lot of different grades. I taught second grade, then I moved to fourth grade, and then sixth grade. So, and I'm, you know, at that time, so I had a whole bunch of first years. But then when um, I was interviewing, and then I interviewed a Waffle House <laughs> in Pensacola, and then went to interview the elementary principal. And at first I thought, hmm, I don't know. But then it almost was like the Lord said, I've prepared you for this. You've taught almost all the classes in the elementary. Mm -hmm. And so I moved to Charlotte and was at Northside Baptist uh, Church and School for about four years. And then um, I moved to Birmingham, Alabama, and was in a really very large uh, Christian school there for six years. And then the Lord, uh, in very interesting way, uh, called me to White House, Tennessee, to help get a Christian school started. And again, the Lord, I guess, prepares you along the mm -hmm. way. And um, there were a good many of us that worked on getting that school started. And then the first year of it, I was the elementary principal. And I'm happy to say the Lord has blessed that ministry and it's now in its 20, 21st year and doing well. Great. And all. So. I think we will be out of order in the chronology, but tell us about your Alaska experience. Uh, that was one of the, the best things I think the Lord called me to do. At Pensacola, when we were teaching, we always, the elementary teachers always had a good news club. And a good news club, that's with child evangelism fellowship. Mm -hmm. And we go into a home once a week for the semester and have a, a good news club. And I loved that. I did two summers uh, down there. And uh, the Lord had to call me to that because uh, Pensacola is like a jungle. Uh, the heat mm -hmm. and the humidity, and but I, I, it was just great. And so I thought, I oh, boy, I would love to, you know, do the five day clubs. I did do uh, two summers of eight weeks of five day clubs, and had the opportunity when I was going to be going to Birmingham uh, to go up and do five day clubs in Alaska. And again, the Lord knew, because I hadn't told anybody I was going to be leaving, and the director in um, Anchorage called and said, I understand you're interested in doing some five-day clubs up here. And I had the summers free, and just incredible. Got to go uh, to Juneau, to what really did it was uh, going to Huna, which is a fish, fishing village 
it's four hours by ferry south of Juneau, mm-hmm. half hour by air. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there was a logging camp there, and they had a small little Christian school in the logging camp. And so for two of the summers, I went there for two weeks. But then always went to Kodiak Island, because my grandfather was born on Kodiak many years ago. So I was able, even there, to do some research on on his background and all. And was going to go look for some uh, information. And they said, well, it's all in New York right now. But anyway, it's in Russian, so I, thought, <laughs> I guess I don't have to worry about that. And so I did the five years there, and just, um, I'd go back in a minute uh, if I could, but uh, the Lord has me here instead of there. So, um, I think you talked about meeting someone who's now rather famous when you were in Tennessee. Do I have the right? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you tell us the story of how you came to know this person and what um, is this the group yes. we're talking about? Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Um, I went with um, ACE, which is Accelerated Christian Education, and I was a homeschool advisor. And we had different states, and I happened to have the state of New Jersey. And um, again, this was back in um, 20, uh, no, uh, 20, in the uh, late 90s, and um, ended up having a uh, uh, some siblings, three brothers. Um, they had a, a younger one too, but uh, the Jonas brothers uh, were my my kids, and um, just had a wonderful uh, time with them. And they loved the Lord, and they did a lot. They were younger, and the it was the teeny boppers mm-hmm. <laughs> that really, really loved them, and um, uh, they were you know a good role model back at that time because uh, they. Um, you know, about being abstaining from, you know, uh, sex and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they would do concerts in uh, schools, public schools and all. And But then they really went on to be very famous mm-hmm. <laughs> and all. And, and they, they broke for a while, but they're back now. And of course, it's, I think it's still, they're popular, but it's probably the ones that were the, the tweenies that are now older mm-hmm. and they still still like them, you know, so, but, uh, and on the other side of that, I also met Norman Rockwell when I was in Lenox. Oh, really? <laughs> and I got to meet him and be in his studio, so a broad range, I guess you yes. say. <laughs> but you actually got to be on the stage at a rock concert, you said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Joe was the middle uh, Jonas brother, and he was, uh, had finished. And uh, they were going to be in a concert in Atlanta. And I told Denise, her, his mom, I said, you know, I can go down there and bring a cap and gown and mm-hmm. present and all like that. And she said, oh, that'd be great. So it did go down, but then it kind of changed. Because uh, when I got there, they said, you know, we've decided to present it to him in the middle of the concert. And there were about 20,000 kids there. And I thought, I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> And so we did, and it was it was really dear and sweet. But right after it, Denise said, "Well, get ready, you're going to be on YouTube." And I said, "Oh no, no, no!" She said, "Oh yes, yes, yes." <laughs> and so that was it. Was really, it, and it was a complete surprise to him. They had no idea. But it's wonderful that you maintain that special relationship all that yeah. time. Yeah, and that's another thing with um, being an academic advisor for homeschoolers, and you have a lot of interaction with the parents. And this still, after um, many, many years, I still have contact with a good many of the families. And uh, I think the Lord put you together uh, in, you know, like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, guess what? You're going to be on YouTube again as a part of this front porch oh, really? conversation. Oh, yes. oh okay. <laughs> Boy, it will really be different. <laughs> No screaming fans in the background or anything. No. Matter of fact, the first concert that I went to, Denise had somebody come out. We were in the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Mm -hmm. which started out as a church way back. And and, uh, she sent out earplugs. She said, you're going to need these. (laughs) And so, but, oh, yeah. What would you say? You said you began your um, Christian faith as a young person. Mm -hmm. 
Was there a particular time that you really knew that God was calling you to the ministry you went into? Um, I always felt I was supposed to be a teacher. And, um, and I had a choice between, having grown up in the Abbott Christian Church, of course, Berkshire, mm-hmm. we knew, and we knew about Aurora also. And um, I just really prayed about it. But my sister is eight years older than I am. And she went back to Berkshire, and she was there. And so I thought, well, I, maybe that's where, where I need to be and all. But at Berkshire, your, your diploma is theology. Now, I'm not a preacher, <laughs> but, that, but then I had the secondary was education. And also, I knew pretty much. And it was, I've thought back and I thought, you know, I had no reason to want to leave home mm-hmm. at 18, but I knew that's what the, where the Lord wanted me to go. And so he, my sister and brother-in-law came down, came across and um, rode back to, um, to Maine to begin with. And then uh, uh, Clark was a pastor up in Presque Isle, Maine. And so I knew that this is where the Lord wanted me to be. And um, his plan was, and that's too, the, uh, Dr. Merrill and Janet were our instructors at Berkshire, and she had the connection with Dr. Horton, mm-hmm. invited him up. So uh, again, we can look back and see what the Lord you know, has done and led. Um, you and I were in the dining room the other day for lunch here, yes. and a lady came up to talk with us. And um, you have a long-term relationship with her that, that you didn't know before. Well, I, I did you or yeah. tell well, us a little bit about how that happened. I, the, being in Pensacola, um, the last 10 years I uh-huh. was in Pensacola and got involved in a ministry called the Bible Time Ministries. And it was begun about almost 30 years ago by a sweet couple. And um, it's a correspondence course. And it has, uh, each level has nine lessons. And because I'm not real mobile. I mean, I can get around, but mm-hmm. I can do a job standing up. So I thought, this is something I can do because I can sit <laughs> and do it. And um, we send a letter, a lesson, excuse me, and a, a worksheet. They do the worksheet. They send it back. Then I correct it, write comments, and all. then I send the new, le- new lesson. So there are nine that, and in dealing with that, you get to know uh, the people, um, I'd say about 50% are incarcerated. Mm-hmm. They may be in a jail or uh, prison or whatever. But then we have a lot. I had teenagers. I had some that were in their late 80s and all doing the lessons. Wonderful. No cost to them at all. And um, about two years ago, um, I had uh, Jeannie. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the times she wrote a, a glowing uh, report on where she lived. And it happened to be Dowling Park, <laughs> the, the village. And I was like, oh my goodness. And so we, um, I would write to her and say, I know all about, because uh, see, a lot of our professors were here when we I mean, would visit back and forth. Mm-hmm. And so it was wonderful to meet, actually meet her face to face. And so we have, you know, had uh, probably a two, three year, three years of um, corresponding and all. And she's just the dear and loves the Lord and mm-hmm. loves the lessons and all. And um, so. So you never know when you're going to meet somebody that has been brought to you by together. Yes. By and, God's leading. You know, there's been kind of a joke with some of my friends and some evangelists that all the wherever you go, you meet somebody you know somebody mm-hmm. and so we have an ongoing because sometimes I'll be someplace one time I was up on a mountain at a, a mother-daughter banquet and I told my friend I said I think they know that girl coming in the door she said we were up on a mountain you don't know her pretty soon she came over to me and said Miss Kim what are you doing here I had taught her in college and I said what are you doing here and it was her brother-in-law's church so uh, you do all all around, uh, you know. Our Christian circle is big, but it's also small. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. When um, when you actually decided to come to the village, how, what was 
What did you expect and what surprised you? Well, I've known about the village and uh, know several people here and all. And we would, and a couple of my friends came two and three years ago. And so I, you know, I knew what it was, but um, it just is neat to meet all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And I'm in Carter House, and so there's just some great friendships that you make. And, you know, that bond in the Lord, uh, you know, is important too. And, but, you know, but there are some people that uh, don't know the Lord too. Mm -hmm. But then that is, in a sense, it's uh, your mission field is right here, you know. So, um, but I love the fact of, uh, you know, new people and fellowshipping and all. The one thing that's a little hard is it's 17 miles from town. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I know about the cows that are on this side, the no ducks. I haven't seen ducks here, but you know, goats and mm -hmm. you know, chickens and all. So it's it's good, but it's uh, a special time. And and I asked several um, of the ones that are fairly new, or mm -hmm. those that you know have been here quite a while. And I said, well, how did you hear about it? And some of them said, well, it was over the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, but then some said, oh, what? Well, I live in lived in Live Oak, and so you know. But uh, I love it. It's. You know, and it was time for me to come. Some of my friends said it was past time. You need to get here sooner. <laughs> but uh, it's been a jo it really a joy to be here. I, I know your um, ministry is important to you, but what other things do you enjoy doing? Well, I love to travel, but that is, I don't do a lot of it now. Um, I do love to read and um and the Lord has given me uh, a special uh, thing about really praying for other people. And I am on Facebook, and it's mainly for those connections, because mm -hmm. I have uh, students, I still call them kids, but my first, <laughs> when I taught second grade the first year, those kids are now 58 years old. And so uh, I still have contact with them too. So I do that. I used to do a lot of arts and crafts, and possibly I'll get back into that. Mm -hmm. um, and I still do some proofreading. There's a ladies magazine. I've been doing it for about four years now and I proofread the magazine. But even though I moved here, I can still do it over the internet and mm -hmm. all. So, uh, you know, that's it. I, I do want to mention, I talked about the Bible uh, yes. ministry. If there's anybody that would want to get uh, a copy or to you know actually join, there's there's no cost to it. Um, just let me know or however, and I'd be glad to get you signed up for it. If you want some in depth, it's not hard, but it is in depth and uh, but wonderful. You learn so much. Uh, and I think boy, this is more of a uh, theology class and and all. And, um, you know, we welcome anybody that would want to, uh, you know, take part in it. Um, if you were to give advice to a young person today, and I know you've been giving advice to young people <laughs> for many years because of your field, but uh -huh. what would you say today? I'd say uh, one important thing, if they're making decisions, base it on Scripture and what the Lord would want you to do. I had an experience where I was having to make a decision if I was going to, do, there was going to be something with the internet and all, or be in a Christian school. And both the, the internet one really sounded like it was going to be an exciting thing and all. Mm -hmm. And I had to go off the side of the road and stop because I was listening to something and it said on, on the radio and it said, if you have to make a choice, what's going to honor the Lord the most? This, where well, you may make a lot more money, mm -hmm. or this. And that's always been, been the key for me. You know, when you have a choice, what's going to honor the Lord? And, and with uh, kids, I had several... Um, girls that uh, were my students and then a couple of years ago we were together and she she asked me she said you know if they were married uh, and I said well um, 
my brother-in-law would say, she has a many brother that loves her more than she does. <laughs> you know, but I told her, I said, you know, if the Lord has someone for you, he'll, you know, you'll meet him. Mm -hmm. And I always tell him, I have a friend that um, ended up being a missionary up on the Amazon in Manaus and in the jungle. And uh, lo and behold, when she was in her mid-40s, a uh, fellow from Washington State had a bucket list. He'd retired. He said, I want to go up the Amazon, and if I can help missionaries along the way, that was one of his, quote, bucket mm -hmm. lists. They met. They've been married now for a number of years. And so I tell him, I said, you know, even if you're up, up not up the creek, but <laughs> <laughs> up the river and the Lord has someone for you, you know, he'll do it. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't, that's okay, too. I, I don't lament that... Um, uh, you know, I never married, but I've got so many kids having taught, and, mm -hmm. and also uh, the Lord's been good. Have you ever taught somebody that was the child of one of your students? Um, I, yeah, I think I have, but I've had uh, several that I now feel like a grandparent. And in some cases, no grandparent, a great grandparent, <laughs> and all. But um, it just, it's what's exciting for me, you know, and the Bible says about, you know, you rejoice if your children follow mm -hmm. the Lord. That's a paraphrase. And I look at the kids that I've had, and so many, many of them are in ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, one or two are in jail, sad to say. Mm -hmm. But, um, and they're coming back to... Uh, to where they grew up in, and they want their kids to have the Christian education because it was important to them mm -hmm. too. So, uh, oh yeah, there's a lot of blessings. Well, you mentioned a bucket list. Are there things on your bucket list? I think I've about used up my bucket list, <laughs> <laughs> but very fortunate to have been able to travel mm -hmm. at times. And, um, a group of us went to the Holy Land and fantastic time and uh, to be sitting on the side of the hill and our pastor reading the Beatitudes mm -hmm. and then um, we got to go even to Egypt and then uh, prior to that uh, went over to England for uh, about three weeks and was able to meet my instructors we they were in Cambridge and what was exciting, uh, he was doing a, uh, a sabbatical from Dallas to the Logical Seminary, and he was doing it in the Tyndale Library. Wow. And so I stayed with him about two days and went in, and I said, who's that picture of it? It was over the uh, uh, fireplace. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, that's William Tyndale. And I said, oh, wow. She said, yeah, this is his house. You know, and I was like, oh, my goodness. So... Uh, it just a lot of those uh, things are special. Um, being able to, uh, there were one or two things that I was able to write and they actually were published mm -hmm. in something. One was a, a King James Version study Bible for kids. Wow. And so the Lord's opened up a lot of, a lot of different things. And I'd say now, I think my bucket it's full. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like it. And I so appreciate your time coming and visiting today and sharing about your life and ministry with viewers. Tune in again for another Front Porch Conversation.